We're going to go and get started. So, so welcome everyone. Um, on behalf of the Education in Crisis and Conflict Network, or ECCN, I'm so happy to welcome you to Evaluating Approaches to Remedial Education Catch-Up Clubs, part of the Education in Crisis and Conflict Network Learning Series. Our learning series is meant to help members access, apply, and share evidence, resources, and tools related to topics drawn from USAID's Education and Crisis and Conflict Learning Agenda. My name is Anna Spector, and I'm an Education and Crisis and Conflict Advisor in USAID Center for Education. While we are presenting in English, live interpretation is available in Spanish, French, and American Sign Language. To access the interpretation channels, please select the corresponding channel from the interpretation icon at the bottom or top of your screen. This is a reminder that we're recording this session. It will be available on the Leading Through Learning Global Platform YouTube channel after the event. This topic of remedial education is a priority for USAID's work in crisis and conflict contexts. The webinar today provides an opportunity to share evidence aligned to one of the key questions from USAID's education and crisis and conflict learning agenda. Specifically, what education delivery modalities are the most effective at improving equitable access to education in crisis and conflict contexts? We have two objectives for this webinar. First, by the end of this session, you will understand the Ketchup Club approach as an intersectoral, holistic approach to remedial education that integrates elements of community-based learning, child protection, and poverty programming to address the educational needs of children in upper primary grades who are at greater academic risk. Second, you will identify how the Ketchup Club model can be implemented in local contexts in Africa, Asia, and Latin America and the Caribbean. Before we dive in, I have a few reminders for you. First, closed captioning is available in English. To access this, click on the CC icon at the bottom or top of your screen. Second, we invite you to post questions or comments in the chat as you are listening. We will monitor the chat for questions as we go. Finally, please make sure you're muted and your camera is off to preserve bandwidth. The Education and Crisis and Conflict Network is part of the USAID Leading Through Learning Global Platform, which includes two other global learning networks, the Higher Education Learning Network, HELEN, and the Global Reading Network, GRN, as well as LTLGP regional representatives in Africa and Latin America and the Caribbean. We hope that in addition to staying tuned to ECCN, you'll be interested in collaboration across the platform. If you are not already a member, you can register now to receive invites to future events for all the networks and chapters, as well as other opportunities to convene with fellow members and engage. With that, I'll turn it over to our first speaker today, Nora Sharif Shafshani, to get us started. Thank you, Anna, and hi, everyone. As Anna mentioned, I'm Nora Sharif Shevshoni, Global Head of Education Program at Save the Children. And I'm going to provide some context for our catch-up clubs model. So why focus on catch-up program remedial education? During the COVID-19 pandemic and the global school closure, Save the Children created the catch-up club as an innovative model meant to prevent widespread dropout and learning loss. We piloted and tested the catch-up club across three continents within the first year. As you can see on this map, more than 30,000 children have participated in the catch-up club so far in 11 countries. And this represents a variety of contexts on the humanitarian development spectrum. We have catch-up club in stable rural and urban areas, but also in refugee camps, host community, or even in active conflict like in Colombia and Myanmar. Catch-up club materials have been translated into Spanish, 
Arabic, French, Shishewa, Hindi, Bangla, Burmese, and Filipino. Currently, we are fundraising to scale and expand the catch-up club uh, to upcoming countries such as El Salvador and potentially Thailand, Laos, and Indonesia. Next slide, please. On this slide, you can see um, our theory of change. And sorry, the slide is a bit text heavy. But what we want to show is that protection and household economic security of children is challenged during a crisis. And these compound the learning loss and risk of dropout from school. So the longer term goal is that children return and stay in school and, and continue to make progress, including engagement in the curriculum, which supports uh, their uh, retention in school. So the response needs to be holistic, hence the importance of the wraparound support of child protection that you can see in yellow in the yellow box and cash assistance. Next slide, please. You might wonder, what are these catch-up clubs? Well, the catch-up club combine the best of what Save Your Children Know works for children to deliver impact within a short time, like within a few months, and enable children to return and remain in school in, in the wake of, of the global pandemic. So that was the primary, but we recognize that catch-up clubs are still needed as we are recovering from this widespread school disruption. We used evidence-based approach, such as our own uh, program called Literacy Boost, Numeracy Boost, and Safe School. But we were also uh, very much uh, inspired by Pratam's teaching at the right level approach. We integrated model with um, education component at the core, but added the wraparound of child of cash and voucher assistance and child protection. And in terms of education, those who can uh, join the club are children aged 8 to 13. Um, and usually these children are in grade 3 to 6. These children are really behind in their study. They are what we call struggling learners. They have difficulty, despite being in upper primary school, they face difficulty in reading and understanding a grade two level text. They also need to improve their self-confidence and motivation to learn. And that's a very important part of the model. We are grouping children by level, not age or grade. And we have included social and emotional learning activities at the start of every catch-up club session in order to set a positive learning atmosphere for the whole session. A session are facilitated by community volunteers who are selected by the community and school leadership and who are trained and coached through the catch-up club cycle. Um, this year, we are starting to pilot the numeracy model and to include the use of education technology. In terms of child protection, we are focusing on case management and for uh, cash and voucher assistance, Facilitators obviously receive a payment for their work, and the families um, who are eligible also receive catch support when their children are enrolled in the catch up club. Next slide, please. So let's zoom in on the education component of the model. The, what you can see, the representation of the full arrow represents the 13 weeks of the cycle. Obviously, the preparation starts with a mobilization of the community and the partnership with the Ministry of Education and school leaders, selection of site, enrollment of children, identification with the community and school leader of community volunteers who will become facilitators in the club. And we have a complete initial training workshop to capacitate our new staff who are working on the catch-up club, the coaches, as well as the volunteers. The red arrow at the start um, in, represents the baseline. We have used ASER tool uh, and adapted it slightly to conduct the assessment. And the result of the first assessment uh, enable us not only to have a baseline for the catch-up club model, but also to group the learners. Usually you have 15 to 25 learners per club. 
And in the first round, and as you can see, there is a repetition of, of the round. So the first round is usually three weeks. You have daily session. Um, it can be between four to six days a week. The schedule of the session is decided by the school and the community. Each session lasts between 90 to 120 minutes. And as we are rolling out this session, the facilitator are supported by their coach. They receive at least one visit where the coach observes the session and provide uh, feedback. And the coach as well with the facilitator organize a peer learning circle where they reflect on their facilitation and they, they learn from each other. So that's the, the, the kind of like standard round one. And then this round is repeated after uh, a break um, two times. And during the break that you can see in the uh, orange um, circles on the screen, during the break, this is where we regroup the children and we also do uh, some refresher training as needed. So it's very much practice based. And throughout the cycle, the children are uh, assessed four times. And what we've seen is most learner progress by two literacy level. And so I'll move to my next and final slide just to share with you um, the global result we've um, um, managed to achieve in um, eight countries. Uh, we still need to add the, the other countries, but on this screen, you can see the result for Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Colombia, Egypt, India, Malawi, Myanmar, and Uganda. And in the catch-up club, there are six uh, reading level. Each level is represented on the bar chart by a color. In brown, you can see the beginner level. Then um, orange is a letter level. Yellow for the word level. Blue for the sentence level. Green, story level. And finally, purple for story with comprehension. And the first bar represents the baseline. And the second bar, the end line. And what you can see is that at baseline, we only had 23% of learners who could read at least sentences. Well, when you move at the end line, what you can see is that 82% of learners can read at least sentences. And among them, 45 children can even do better because they can read a grade two level text. And some of them in purple can answer a comprehension question. And this progress was made in 50 to 60 hours of engagement in the catch-up club. So on average, 60% of children progress by at least two reading level. So you can see that um, we've had like some rapid uh, significant result and our colleague will uh, provide more detail on the evaluation. And such result would also, I think a combination of a strong global model that had a clear fidelity of implementation, but also a lot of like contextualization and adaptation that you will hear about now. We also had a strong focus on evidence building as we are pilot. We were, we were piloting the model. So um, I'm happy now to hand over to my colleague Laura Castillo, who is going to talk about how we design the impact evaluation for our capture club activity. Laura, over to you. Thanks, Nora. Hi, everyone. And my name is Laura Castillo. I am MIL coordinator um, from Save Children Colombia. And I'm going to be, give a brief overview of the impact evaluation design for our Catch Up Clubs model. Next slide, please. Thanks. Uh, to carry out the impact assessment of Catch Up Clubs, a MIL's analysis approach was implemented encompassing both quantitative and qualitative aspects. Uh, on the quantitative front, impact assessment allowed for the determination of changes in outcomes that can be attributed to a specific intervention uh, owing to its rigorous research methodology. Uh, the approach used was the difference in difference method this methodology involves applying a double difference, uh, meaning it seeks to compare changes over time in the variable of interest between the treatment group and the control group. 
For this methodology to hold validity, it's not necessary for the treatment and control group to be similar to each other in their observable characteristics. Uh, unlike in randomized experiments where balance is essential uh, in measuring impact, uh, the difference in difference methods request condition for impact evaluation is assumption of parallel trends. Uh, this assumption presumes that in the absence of the treatment, both groups will have followed the same trajectory in the outcomes of interest. And next slide, thanks. For the control group, we assess what will happen to the treatment group in the absence of evaluation, uh, which is statistically similar of average. We employ two methods for selecting our control group. The first one is randomization lottery, and the second one is quasi-experimental design, manual selection of our control group and conducting tests after the baseline. Uh, ultimately, we evaluated both groups in two points in the time to determine the difference between the baseline and the end line for both the treatment and control groups and as well as the difference between the two groups themselves. And next slide, thanks. From a qualitative perspective, we followed the theoretical sampling method through intentional sampling to inductively uncover hypotheses of theories based on the collect data and information. This approach showed additional effects and outcomes associated with the program too. Uh, for the data collection process, we collect input for, from the educational community and the implementation team, and we conducted focus group with the facilitators and mentors, and uh, well as structured interviews with the children, teachers, schools, and caregivers too. Next slide. Uh, our implementation and participant selection process begin in the phase one, uh, during which schools are chosen in collaboration with the local authorities. Uh, the selection criteria prioritize schools with lower learning outcomes and the country preference tests, particularly in Colombia, for example, in rural areas and municipalities affected by conflict. Uh, these areas show significant learning disparities. Then the selection criteria when shared with the teacher and the school authorities, boys and girls in third and fifth grades or in second grade with additional year or extra age and were identified for partic participation. And teachers refer students based on additional criteria like poor learning outcomes, for example, and risk for dropping out and repeating a grade in previous year. Next, a baseline evaluation was conducted to identify the children in the need of the program and measure their learning level. Based on the assessment results, students were grouped in two categories, such as letters and words, sentences, stories, and compression. And while the Treatment Truth started the program, the control group remained on a waiting list to start after the conclusion on the final assessment, maintaining an ethical approach within the program. Next slide, please. Thanks. Finally, regarding the sampling of the training, treatment and control groups, care was taken to prevent any contamination within the schools and the focus on children based on the school and group size. For the assessment tools, the ACER annual status of education report evaluation was primarily employed to determine the children proficiency levels. Scores and criteria were established to assign each child to a specific proficiency level. Additionally, we developed a qualitative instruments for the interviews and focus groups conduct. And now uh, we will pause for a Q&A session. Nora and I can answer uh, any initial questions about the catch up clubs models and about uh, the impact evaluation design.
Thank you so much. And we continue to invite our participants to add questions in the chat throughout the session um, so that you have a chance to ask and have answers. Uh, one question that was asked is uh, for recommendations on remedial networks that promote remedial education. And uh, Kate responded with a link to the ECCN LinkedIn discussion group, which is one great resource for being able to access information on remedial education. We also have the Save the Children Resource Center. The link is also in the chat. And Nora's email address is also available for you to reach out with additional questions. Another question has come up. So Laura and uh, Nora, if you could please make yourselves available. The question here from Suzanne is, were children with disabilities included in this intervention? Thank you for... Ah, thank you, Nora. <laughs> yeah, I can I can give a bit of uh, information on on the program side. So yes, we did um, include children with uh, disabilities, and in um, some instances, uh, there are two facilitators. One that who is facilitating the whole session, and the other one that we call the community learning and inclusion facilitator who is supposed to provide additional support to children uh, with disabilities. So this is part of the model. And this is certainly um, something we also uh, worked on with um, the child protection uh, case management. In certain instances, we refer children to the child protection case management to services to support uh, sometimes the diagnostic of their special needs. Uh, and so um, this is something we would like to uh, strengthen uh, as we are uh, improving the model, but it was part of uh, the design at the start. Thank you for that. And I'll leave Laura if she has comment on, on the research side. Laura, I will direct this question to you that came up about research. Uh, what were some of the limitations, if any, that you saw in your research? Yeah, we have uh, some limitations of the analysis. For example, in Colombia, uh, we have an imbalance between the treatment and control group because we started the treatment group um, first with the schools that were already and the beginning, we have a lot of problems like in volunteers and all the staff. And another limitation had a data collection, for example, with time in difference because we have in this period um, a lot of episodes of situation about conflict and rains and floods in Colombia and election, for example. And the other limitation uh, that we had, um, we didn't know uh, manage the complete the records of all of the children with their caregivers because in rural areas is so difficult because the the children uh, live and in some different distance to the school and the caregivers didn't assist on all spaces. Um, the other limitation that we had is, for example, the externalities, uh, side effects were not measure, uh, and other uh, secondary effects. Uh, this is, for example, some like that. Thank you so much. There are so many questions that are coming in the chat, which I really appreciate. Um, we will not have the opportunity to answer all of the questions uh, due to the number of presentations we have, but we will do our best to integrate questions throughout multiple Q&A sessions that we have. And we can also follow up, um, as I mentioned before, we have Nora's um, email address shared for any um, additional follow-ups that you may have. Uh, so one last question for the time being is um, around background information that was collected on children. 
So was there any background information on children collected, such as uh, their parental, uh, their parents' literacy? Um, and if so, how was this data collected? Yes, we have uh, collected this information. Uh, for example, uh, for us in Colombia, um, all caregivers uh, in the space um, allow how um, register uh, based in the parent records, such as reading level, uh, ethnicity, uh, social economic level two, and uh, for example, um, the the story in the level school for the each children and the oral practices in reading in each house. Thank you so much. So I will now pass it on to um, my colleague Roxana to do her presentation on Bangladesh and its use of catch-up clubs. Roxana, over to you. Yeah, thanks. As Deborah mentioned, I'm Roxana Khano, working as a manager of basic education at Send the Children Bangladesh. So I'll go to speak to the catch-up club model implementation and results in Bangladesh. So welcome to Bangladesh presentation. In 2022, the catch-up clubs uh, piloted in sponsorship impact areas. You can see in a map of Bangladesh, in the upper green color, it's a Gaibandha, one of the district, northern district. And in the lower green box, you can see it's a Borishal, uh, a south central coastal district of Bangladesh. Gaibandha was marked as very high poverty area and Borishal was crisscrossed with plenty of rivers. Both, both districts experiences of natural disasters, cyclones, flood, drought, and river erosion. So both, uh, both of the districts are compared to national data, considering the education indicator. In Gaibandha, dropout rate was at primary level 41.5%, where national level is 17.9%. And in the other side, in Borishal situation analysis, discovered 21.2% dropout rate, whereas national rate is 17.2%. And 18.7% primary cycle completion rate, whereas national rate is 95.5%. Uh, we have uh, covered both in the district, uh, implemented and piloted the catch-up clubs. And we initially uh, conducted blanket survey with our uh, catch-up clubs and And our uh, uh, total 2,159 uh, children uh, participated, both boys and girls, who are grade three to five level uh, learners. And uh, they have, uh, uh, after the reading assessment, they are found in grade two literacy level as per following the reading assessment. So our, our session instruction was Bangla, it's mother tongue. And 1,836 uh, learners successfully completed the catch-up club session. The main instrument used was the catch-up club reading assessment, already uh, Nora mentioned, and already uh, Laura talked about that. Designed by Save the Children and adapted from a search tool and widely used and validated uh, of that uh, reading assessment tool. It's a holistic approach we learned from uh, Nora's presentation. It's a integrated elements have successfully we demonstrated rapid learning gains and builds on Save the Children existing expertise community-based learning, child protection, child poverty programming. So next slide, please. So the main purpose of the evaluation was to measure the impact of catch-up clubs on literacy outcomes model is to addressing learning loss. This was a mixed method, already Laura talked about detail on it. 
and quasi experiment design and using difference in differences analysis by analyzed chapter breeding assessment, child and caregiver interview, socioeconomic status, home learning environment, schooling, and social emotional learning. That graph shows a disaggregation per category at baseline and in line of the treatment and control groups. As shown by the control group, natural improvement of attending school leads to a gradual increase of 18% of the students being able to complete the assessment by N line and the reduction of seven percentage point in the number of students who are able to recognize letters. Students in the treatment group showed more drastic, significant improvement with 37% of students being able to complete the entire assessment. By end line, only 5% were able to recognize letters. Next slide, please. According to our end line findings, this slide represents you're muted oh sorry sorry for that between baseline and end line the treatment group increased 32 percentage points the impact of catch-up clubs on reading assessment was 19 percentage points furthermore based on the sampling calculations providing a 95% confidence interval, a power of 80%, and a minimum dictatable effect of 30%. The evaluation sample was composed by 37 government treatment school, 37 control school. In each school, in each class, we have 30 students per school for a total of 1,020 of children and 1,020 of caregivers participated in the uh, study. I'm sorry for my uh, speaker was unmute suddenly. Sorry for that. Next slide, please. So equity analysis in this slide, considering the vulnerability factors. So we all we are seeing provided in the chap clubs model aims to target students most impacted by inequality. This section intends to study its ability to do so. We started by studying some usual determinants of inequality that affected a student's learning ability, and then taking a step further, the learning trajectory of lower performing students. There are certain factors that are known affect students' learning abilities, a clear indication that not all children are born equal opportunities hence equal probabilities of performing well in school. We studied four different factors, socioeconomic status. We saw that socioeconomic status, our, we found in our study, students of high socioeconomic status were performing, performing on average 75% higher than students low socioeconomic status. And the second factor we studied was parental education. There is also uh, exhaustive liter literature that demonstrated that students with parents that have attained higher education, or in this case, parents that read and write, perform better at school. So in our study, we also found that parental education predicts on average a 26% increase in the school. So, and the third factor we analyzed was the home learning environment, like uh, uh, having a book at home, someone reading to them, and reading to learn at home. We also found that a home learning environment predicts a uh, average 22% increase in literacy scores. And the last factor we considered is gender. We are interested in understanding the impact of gender on reading scores and if perhaps we're able to widen or narrow the gender gap. We found that girls are predicted to have 30% higher score than boys. And considering the performance across gender, we found that 
full control group, the intervention group, but treatment group, difference only one percentage point. So that evidence hints that the clubs help reduce the gender gap. Next slide, please. So here we are trying to uh, uh, analyze on the equity uh, lower for performance in uh, Bangladesh. So the learning trajectory of the lower performing students will analyze inequality in terms of reading outcomes. So we define lower performing students as those that were assigned to later level at baseline. Our findings show that the impact on literacy outcomes, lower performers is 26% higher than the average student. While the effect of catch-up clubs on reading outcomes was 19% point for all students. The effect for lower performers students was 24 percentage point. So it is worth noting that the, both the treatment and the control group improved more than the average, probably implying that improvement in the lower levels is on average higher than across our entire sample. And therefore that improvement intra category is not linear. Finally, the studying category distribution at baseline and end line from the 100% that started in later level at baseline only 15%. Then the treatment group third, then the control group 30% become complete, a fourfold compared to the control group. Lastly, catch up club innovation has proven significant progress on a students' learning outcomes, should therefore be prioritized as a data proven success by using a rigorous methodology, such as a difference in differences estimation, we can assert that the improvement in learning outcomes were a result of the participation of students in the class. Next slide, please. So from our piloting period, we have learned many things from the community and also parents and learners and also who are our community learning inclusion facilitators and teachers. And it was short-term promising remedial support for the children who are uh, upgrade primary school learners and to receive learning equity and living in the hard to reach areas. Also, it was helping to increase school attendance among catch-up club learners compared to non-catch-up club learners. In addition, if in the short-term catch-up club social learning activities give concrete support to the children improving their learners, improving their behavior management, including the community learning inclusion facilitator. They also enjoyed the sessions and happy with that uh, social emotional learning activities. Moreover, catch-up clubs offer remedial learning opportunities for the children most affected by inequality and discrimination. The catch-up clubs remedial learning opportunities are highly accepted by family, community and education officials. Lastly, we will need to strengthen our community and peer support by developing some strategies and, and platforms for sustainable volunteerism, support including continuity to, of support. Thank you. I will pause here and I'm going to open the floor for your questions regarding catch-up clubs in Bangladesh. So for this, I will turn back to Deborah. Thank you. Thank you, Roxana. Um, we have a great question um, in the chat about factors that we have to take into consideration to implement catch-up clubs in different contexts. There are so many people in the chat um, from around the world interested and in asking about wanting to start catch-up clubs in their uh, locations. So what, for for your experience, from your experience, what factors um, did you have to take into consideration to really localize the program for a Bangladeshi audience? Okay, thank you for your nice question. Uh, actually, uh, for localization, first localization is we uh, did all the modules in Bangla translation. And in our first phase catch up club, we have implemented and using the uh, Bangla translation modules 
and then after the end of the first phase of the catch up club april to june phase then we uh, conducted a uh, workshop to get got the uh, hands on experience from community learning inclusion facilitator and coach and we have uh, reviewed the, all the things uh, very simple language uh, because uh, most of the uh, facilitators are uh, higher school uh, student or uh, under 10th grade student. So they need to understand the languages. It's one of the uh, important thing we reviewed and localized. And uh, our language was actually Bangla and in also localization in our impact area. Uh, we have uh, not uh, in included two uh, uh, CLI uh, community learning facilitator. We included a combination of one learning facilitator because it's a, a cost uh, minimization because in impact area we have other programs so we parallelly want to uh, match with that context not to conflict with our existing programs so that way we will adapt it other things and also uh, we have uh, six days uh, session and uh, 120 minutes uh, of the session and there is a break so we not formally uh, give the break, just we have that time conducted the uh, week, end week, two, after two weeks, three weeks, the assessment and school, the sessions are very uh, flexible because if we give the break, then learner, difficult to get the learner again in the same pace. So that, that this is our way to be localized and also some games there. So those games, we use our local names, like there is a Simon says there is one game so we in our local names like ronnie is a very common name in bangladesh so we use like ronnie this way we make that things localization thank you so much roxana wonderful thank presentation thank i will you. pass it over now to our colleague lusungu to give a presentation on catch-up clubs in malawi Lusungu, over to you. Right, thanks Deborah and hello everyone. Um, Lusungu Mwale, the basic education technical coordinator working with Save the Children and I'm based in Malawi. Uh, for my presentation, I'll be focusing on Catch Up Club model here in Malawi. Next slide, please. All right, so just to give um, a brief context of where Catch Up Clubs were being implemented here in Malawi for the purposes of the pilot share where we conducted the study. Um, in Malawi, Catch Up Clubs were being implemented in Cheu District, which is one of the districts uh, in the central region of the country. And um, Cheu uh, is one of the districts which usually registered a high dropout rate, uh, especially for primary schools. For example, in 2020, uh, the district had a dropout rate of um, 3.6%, and while the country as a whole had a dropout rate of 4%. So you can see that uh, uh, the district had a high dropout rate there. And also when we look at its performance on national uh, school, national examinations uh, in primary schools, uh, the district is slightly below the average and usually it is in the bottom 10 among the 10 districts uh, that are in the country. And also just to add on that, um, the uh, integrated household survey that was conducted in 2020 um, it had indicated that uh, literacy rate for population of five years and above in the district was at 71% and also on the same 13% uh, had never attended school. Um, just to mention that catch up clubs, though it was being implemented in Chew district, uh, it wasn't targeting the whole district. Um, the focus was only in 15 schools. And between October to December 2022, uh, catch up clubs was being uh, implemented in 15 schools. And uh, it had a total of um, 700, it had a total of 671 learners. Just also to indicate that the language of instruction that was being used in the catch-up clubs um, 
is Chichewa, uh, which is the local and official language of instruction that is used uh, in the uh, area grades in primary school, that is uh, in from grade one up to grade four. And also the same language uh, is also the language that is usually spoken um, in our homes here in Chew district. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, the study uh, targeted all the leaders that were uh, in the treatment schools, that is uh, the 671 leaders that were in the 15 schools um, where we were implementing catch-up clubs. And in addition to that, we had also targeted 495 leaders uh, from control schools where we just wanted to differentiate, uh, to know, uh, uh, to, at least to evaluate the impact of catch-up clubs. So we had to compare with other schools that were not implementing catch-up clubs. So we had targeted 15 schools that were not uh, implementing catch-up clubs and we had taken a total of uh, 495 learners to be part of this uh, evaluation and all these were randomly selected. So uh, as you can see from the graphs, uh, you, the results showed that learners that had participated uh, in uh, catch-up clubs had uh, almost double the chance of completing all the learning category, all the leading categories, and at least they had three times higher chance of uh, recognizing leaders uh, when we compare to those uh, children that have never participated um, in catch-up clubs. Next slide, please. So we also had, um, we had to determine the impact of catch-up clubs uh, on literacy outcomes. So for, uh, from the graph, you can also see that um, um, catch-up clubs has a very huge positive impact on literacy outcomes. Uh, the graph there shows that uh, learners that had participated uh, in catch-up clubs ha uh, um, have twice as much uh, performed uh, performed uh, twice as much as those that uh, had never participated in uh, in catch up clubs and you can see that there is a difference of uh, twelve percent which only shows that catch up clubs indeed uh, have a positive impact uh, on the on the literacy outcomes for the children that participate in these clubs uh, next slide please. Uh, just as uh, Luxana had indicated, in Malawi, you also had to do an analysis on the vulnerability factors. So uh, in, yeah, in Malawi, we had to look at the ability of catch-up clubs uh, to target students that are most impacted by inequality uh, by looking at factors that are known to affect the students' learning abilities. So in this case, we looked at socioeconomic status. We also looked at the home learning environment. We looked at gender as well as uh, the parental education. So from our study, as you can also see on the slide, um, uh, students of high economic status were performing on an average of 11%, uh, 0.5% percent higher than those students uh, that are of uh, low economic status, which all, which only shows that students that are coming from uh, well-to-do families have at least a higher chance of performing better than those that are not uh, coming, than those that are coming from uh, low economic status families. We also looked at parental education. Uh, on this one, we noted that um, uh, parental education has an impact on the performance of uh, learners in the catch-up club. So we 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 looked uh, from the study, we can see that at least uh, the, the parental uh, education predicts an average of 33% increase uh, on uh, literacy scores. Apart from that, we also looked at the home learning environment. So for purposes of this uh, study, uh, home learning was defined as uh, uh, learners being exposed to having books at home, some leading uh, to them at home or reporting to learn at home. So with all this, uh, the results showed that uh, home learning env uh, environment predicts uh, on average of 35% increase uh, in literacy scores, which also only shows uh, shows that when a learner uh, is uh, exposed to home learning, it has a high positive uh, impact on their uh, learning outcomes, especially uh, in literacy. And um, lastly, we also looked at the issue of gender, where we had to see if catch-up clubs were able to uh, widen the uh, or to widen or to narrow the gap uh, between boys and girls. So we from from the study, we uh, we found out that girls are predicted to have at least a thirty one percent score uh, than boys. Next slide, please. 
we also had to look at um, equity, focusing much on the low performing uh, learners. So from the slide, you can see that the learning trajectory of um, learners of, of learners of low performing students uh, is almost the same as an average. But also we can see that while the impact uh, on the average student uh, is an improvement of 12% uh, percentage points between uh, baseline and end line, uh, poor performing students had improved by uh, 11 per percentage points. From there, we can also see that uh, from the hundred percent that uh, from the hundred percent learners that had studied uh, on the later level at baseline, only twenty one percent remained uh, in the treatment group, which is a third uh, than uh, in the control group. So uh, also, uh, this also shows that. Uh, Catch up club uh, had a high uh, impact on, on the uh, trajectory or on the learning trajectory of learners. Um, in the course of implementing catch up clubs, there are a number of lessons that we've drawn uh, here in Malawi. Uh, I'll just uh, go through the most uh, notable ones. So the first one is, uh, it is feasible to conduct catch-up club sessions outside the school calendar, provided there is a good engagement between teachers and parents. Uh, here in Malawi, the project had to adapt uh, the schedule due to various factors outside the control of the project. So this resulted into us even implementing uh, catch-up clubs with, even within uh, the school holidays. And also we had noted that uh, there is a positive working relationship. If there is a positive working relationship between uh, teachers and uh, community uh, learning volunteers who are our facilitators uh, in cash up clubs, then there is uh, that uh, good health uh, working relationship, which also results into maximum support of learners, both from the school and at the community level, which means that the teachers will support the learners while they are in the uh, school uh, during the mainstream hours. And then the community through the community learning facilitators will give their maximum support to the learners uh, when they are uh, in the cash up clubs or when they are at home. And also we had noted that uh, some of the uh, approaches that are being used uh, in catch-up club sessions are also being re uh, replicated, uh, replicated by the teachers uh, in the mainstream uh, teaching. For example, we have matrons or patrons that uh, help us in monitoring the sessions uh, in catch-up clubs. We've seen them or some of them have been observed uh, using uh, the catch-up club approaches. For example, using uh, the social emotional learning activities and sometimes using the light, uh, the teaching at the light level approach in their uh, mainstream uh, teaching processes. So which also shows that um, catch up clubs had ha have had uh, an impact uh, even in the, t uh, in the teaching of learners uh, in the mainstream uh, uh, set up. And also we have also noted that uh, if well oriented communities can embrace the child protection principles learned, learned from the catch up clubs. Uh, for us, we have observed that uh, the stakeholders have begun to harmonize the case management and also the referral pathways, and this follows uh, the case management trainings that uh, the project had put in place for different stakeholders that are work uh, in uh, uh, child protection issues. And also, as you rightly heard, that uh, catch up club assessments are done at three weeks intervals. So for us, we felt that um, having a pool of uh, research assistants who would uh, help in conducting the assessments on catch up clubs or uh, having them on a medium or longer term, uh, but or longer term uh, reduces the lead time and hence it doesn't disrupt uh, the uh, the sessions or the recruitment processes in catch up clubs and uh, in the end it does not uh, disrupt uh, the sessions that we uh, we put in place uh, in catch up clubs hence not disturbing the uh, catch up club calendar. So I uh, will pause right here and see if there are any questions about catch-up clubs here in Malawi. And uh, at this point, I'll turn back to uh, Deborah. Thank you, and over Deborah. Thank you, Lusungu. We do have one question about how the Malawi team has determined the selection of participants for catch-up club. Can you tell us a bit about the criteria that you use to select which students will participate in catch-up clubs? Okay, so for starters, uh, here in Malawi, catch-up clubs uh, is targeting uh, learners from grades three up to grades four, 
grade five. And what we usually do is uh, we go into the schools, we look at the performance of the learners. So we select those that are in the bottom of the class. Uh, mostly we look at maybe the bottom 20 in the class that are, those are the learners that are struggling so much in all the subjects uh, in the uh, in the class. So our entry point, of course, uh, is on the Chichewa language that I said. So we look at the learners that are struggling so much with Chichewa, with reading Chichewa, as the, which is the language of instruction that we use in catch-up clubs. So we do the assessment, uh, but then focusing much on those learners that uh, we have identified as struggling learners based on their school progress reports. Thank you, Anova. Thank you so much, Lucingu. And I have one more question for you. Um, you mentioned child protection and that referral process. What has your team done to make that referral process successful in the implementation in Malawi? All right. Uh, so Catch Up Clubs as a project, uh, we had uh, we had put in place some trainings that were focusing on child protection. For starters, we had trained our community volunteers uh, in the general child protection uh, issues. So these uh, volunteers were trained on how best they, uh, they can identify issues light, uh, in, uh, light from the classroom. So when they, uh, when they, when they are uh, teaching the learners or when they are praying with the learners in the catch-up club sessions, they are able to identify uh, any child who has any uh, child protection issues. Once they do that, um, they are lef they refer the cases to all the child protection um, stakeholders that were trained together with them. Because when we were training the facilitators, we did not just train the facilitators themselves, but we had also included some of the stakeholders that are very key uh, in the uh, reporting uh, pathway. So we looked at the mother groups that are based at school level. We also looked at the child protection committees that are based at community level where uh, where the schools are, uh, are situated and we also trained um, the district where where all the reports go to where the where all the decisions are made so there is that collaboration because for right from the start we had uh, put them all together to give them um, all so that they are all aware of what is expected from them or so that they are aware of all their laws and responsibility in terms of uh, dealing with issues of child protection. So with that coordination, it has been so easy for us uh, yeah, to ensure that all, all the cases that are, are, are brought in are handled and they are referred to the, uh, to the right uh, stakeholders to handle the issues. Thank you, Androva. Thank you, Lusengu. It shows very well that it's a multi-approach, um, a multi-step approach in order to be successful with those elements on child protection. Um, I will now pass it to Aisha to talk about our final highlighted country, which is Colombia. Over to you, Aisha. Thanks, Deborah. Hi, everyone. My name is Aisha Kochak. I'm the Education Senior Technical Expert with Save the Children, and I'm going to share our experience with catch-up clubs in Colombia. As Nora has mentioned, Colombia was one of the, the first pilots. Catch-up clubs have been implemented in two departments, Norte de Santander and Cauca, and five municipalities in Colombia, where there's high levels of conflict, displacement, poverty, and school dropout. We have selected these departments as children's access to education gets disrupted due to conflict. As a result, they have lower educational achievements, including lower literacy skills. For this particular study, we have selected 299 children randomly uh, to be part of the control group, and in total, 512 students participated in the whole process. 50% uh, were girls. As you can see in the graph, 31% of the control group achieved the maximum level of reading skills compared to 52% in the treatment group, representing a significant increase of 63%, which is, which is a statistical calculation uh, the difference between the end line results in percentages. This difference, statistically speaking, 
is considered as significant and is at 0.1% level. In addition, 79% of the participants completed the program at the highest level of reading and comprehension. Next slide, please. This image shows the percentage increase in the score before and after by gender and group. It shows that the treatment group demonstrated a remarkable progress. This is the case for both girls and boys. However, as you can see from the graph, girls had even higher gains, 37.9%, uh, especially when compared with the um, a control group, the increase is even, even more significant. So why girls have higher gains? Well, in the clubs, we specifically use stories where women and girls are the leading characters. So we change a little bit of the content of the stories that we're using. And this is likely to uh, motivate uh, girls. And these positive outcomes demonstrate the effectiveness of our approach in encouraging girls in their literacy journey. Next slide, please. Uh, however, different outcomes were seen when studying the results based on the ethnicity of the children. It shows that Afro-Colombian children did not have the same significant gains as non-Afro-Colombian children. Now, this might be result of economic disadvantages faced by Afro-Colombian families. We know that literacy and poverty rates are disproportionately higher in these communities. Many parents go through significant economic hardship, many of them illiterate uh, themselves. And as, um, as you can maybe remember from the uh, presentation of um, Bangladesh, the home environment, the education level of parents also plays a yeah, significant role. However, more in-depth research is needed to understand this discrepancy because we also had um, a smaller um, sample size. Next slide, please. So as our colleague Laura uh, at the beginning of the presentation explained, uh, we also uh, did a, a qualitative uh, analysis, um, which we gained through a focus group discussion with children, parents, and teachers. Uh, what they told us is uh, children demonstrated an increase in motivation for learning and increased social emotional learning skills such as conflict resolution and managing emotions. Children have told us that they feel much more confident in the classroom. Teachers reported that children are participating a lot more, probably they're feeling a lot more confident, and their interaction with peers have improved. Parents also said that children feel safe in these clubs. Important to remember that we were working in, in conflict-affected zones and making new friends and are more motivated to go to school. These definitely feed into a uh, positive contribution to their uh, educational trajectories and their um, retention in school. Um, Deborah, let's pause and see if there are any questions about catch-up clubs in Colombia. So I'll pass it back to you for the first question. Thank you so much. Um, for Colombia, uh, there is a question about whether catch-up clubs intersect with the return to learning program. Can you speak to that? Okay. Now, return to learning program has a um, slightly different focus, or let's say has a, uh, a bigger focus on social emotional learning. Whereas catch-up clubs is an accelerated literacy model. So in places that we were implementing for this specific pilot, we didn't have a uh, return to learning, but as Nora was also mentioning, social emotional learning is part of a uh, catch up clubs. However, literacy skills, strengthening literacy skill in an accelerated way is the focus of uh, catch up clubs. Thank you. And I think that's a nice way to transition to another question. What makes catch-up club special or different from mm -hmm. medial education programs? 
Okay. Now, in Colombia, we do have remedial education programs. Uh, now, in our remedial education programs, we're not only working on literacy skills, but equally on numeracy skills and social emotional learning. So the, it's a little bit, um, uh, the content is slightly different, although uh, let's say the, the basic skills that we're working on literacy also applies to remedial education. The other difference is our remedial education programs are not accelerated uh, models. So we work for a much longer period uh, with those students after school, whereas with um, catch-up clubs, the focus is accelerated learning on literacy. So the implementation is a lot more intense, but shorter period of time. Mm -hmm. And one last question that um, relates very appropriately for the Columbia context is whether there have been refugee children uh, in these catch-up club programs in your experience with them? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, we definitely had um, refugees and migrants from uh, Venezuela. Uh, however, for this specific pilot that we were presenting, our focus was more on conflict affected uh, areas. This doesn't mean that there wasn't any uh, refugee and migrant children, but the majority, the characteristic of those departments is more around conflict and displacement, internal displacement. Thank you so much. That was a great presentation. And thank you everyone in the audience for all the questions. We will continue to answer them as we can throughout the uh, following Q&A and within the chat. Um, but now I will hand it over to Maya Gordon to discuss the global implications and analysis of this Catch-Up Club study. Maya, over to you. Thanks, Deborah. I am Maya Gordon, Research and Evidence Advisor at Save the Children. Let's zoom out and look at what the evidence is telling us more broadly about the catch-up clubs model. We see strong results across the three countries, and this is consistent with our other evaluations as well. Children in catch-up clubs make more rapid progress than those who are not. The intervention is effective in, for addressing learning loss in crisis in post and post-crisis, including for conflict. Um, next slide, please. So um, building evidence going forward. We want to look more at the four E's, starting now with efficiency and equity, and soon to do a scalability assessment. On social and emotional learning, or SEL, using a short SEL interview, we saw some promising findings in Myanmar but we would like to learn more and in other countries too. Combining numeracy and an app in El Salvador and evaluating the best combinations and doing A-B testing with youth impact in Bangladesh. We're seeking opportunities for a tracer study to assess longer term changes of retention and progress in school. Next slide, please. So global next steps uh, to continue to adapt the model to different contexts and geographies, seeing the adaptability we have seen so far. Introduce numeracy and teaching and learning. Combine with an app that levels to children's abilities and complements learning facilitator engagement. Continue to secure resources and seek opportunities to scale up. 
Now, I'm, I'm to hand this over to my colleague, Merzen, to lead us through a discussion of the wider implications of the catch-up club model. So over to you, Merzen, and next slide, please. Thanks, Maya. My name is Mozem Hussain, and I'm a basic education advisor of international programs in Save the Children. Thank you for your great questions and comments so far. So by this time, we already have some familiarity that how catch-up clubs uh, contributed to uh, the crisis situation uh, with, uh, and, and also addressing the school disruption during the COVID-19 pandemic, and also how it supported community of education as well as supporting the remedial education, which is why it is prepared for use in conflict and crisis context. And we have also some great examples uh, from uh, Colombia, uh, also and with Myanmar. So I want to invite our panelists um, to come up with some additional sides uh, from the questions that we received from the chat box and also to see on the screen there is a, 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 a QR code uh, you can use your mobile phone to scan this and uh, post your question there and also there is um, another uh, option uh, uh, open your browser and type uh, slido.com and then you can enter the code one two seven five seven two seven or posting your question in the chat box and, and also you can use your the chat box. So um, I would like to now invite our panelists um, uh, if there is any unanswered question. So our panelists already has been trying to respond to this question in the chat box, uh, but any additional thoughts on that, that how we have been ensuring uh, this catch up club to any emergency or conflict situation wants to come first. Nora, if you want to speak out. Okay, so here um, we have one more question. Um, Considering the prevalences of learning differences in reading and numeracy and dyslexia among children, what if any reading approaches are used to support these children in the countries where catch-up clubs are active? What a great question. Anyone from our panelists wants to respond to this question, which is very important that how we are ensuring the inclusiveness, inclusivity in a catch-up club. So we, uh, mentioned that at the beginning when we filter the children, uh, when we select the children uh, learners uh, for the catch-up clubs that time, we identify uh, the children with the special needs or, or needs specific challenges, learning challenges. Then our facilitator also have some uh, uh, strategies in our training that we discuss. But in addition to that, like you know, those very particular uh, disability or, or learning challenges like dyslexia, how we have been addressing. Anyone wants to respond to this? Aisa? Uh, yes, <laughs> I was looking uh, way to uh, mute myself. Yes, we have made some, um, let's say some uh, adjustments. Uh, for example, um, like for, for children with um, difficulty with seeing, we printed uh, reading materials that are big in letters so they can uh, you know facilitate uh, their um, uh, seeing uh, also in some cases where we know a child has um, a, let's say um, difficulties around pss uh, we know there are some uh, there are barriers to learning because of the um, uh, mental health uh, issues uh, because in the context we were working, as I said, there was a lot of displacement, uh, armed conflict. So there we included more a uh, play-based or increased uh, that component more for those children because we had situations 
where while we were implementing, the conflict intensified and that created a lot of fear for children. So when we go back to those uh, spaces again, we needed to include more play-based uh, activities. So yes, some adjustments have been made. Great, thank you. And I am seeing Nora has also been responding uh, that we have one signature program that we call Student Needs Action Pack that mainly deals with the inclusive pedagogy. So we just tailored uh, some contents into our community learning inclusion facilitators training um, at the beginning of uh, Catch Up Club before they uh, launched the session. That time actually they received some simple strategies that how they can identify the learning needs and how they can uh, give some specific strategies. For example, Aisha was mentioning the big flashcard or big chart uh, with some big symbols or big letters, something like this. And, and also locally, they also adopt uh, some inclusive materials um, from either from the Ministry of Education or from the schools. Okay, so there is another question. Um, and that question also been responded. Considering, uh, oh no, not this one. So, and by this time also we are seeing um, some good responses uh, from different perspectives about uh, uh, how how catch up club model is uh, relevant in an emergency context or in any conflict. So we are getting some good responses that how uh, this model has been relying on communities to select facilitators and setting the catch up club for uh, the uh, Learn most at, at need and also improving literacy of students. That's very true. And also, it includes social emotional learning support to instill some kind of resilience. Uh, and also, uh, I was seeing some uh, qualitative aspect uh, how uh, the country of his team being measured um, the cell outcome. Um, it, it was not a quantitative part. But a qualitative way, um, there were some good lessons that Bangladesh team was mentioning that um, uh, the community has been taking it very positively. Learners really enjoy the session, and and also they are now the learning facilitator, community learning facilitator can easily deal with some behavior management, which is one of the greatest outcomes so far we observe. Yeah, so another question came into the chat box. Uh, Can you share Save the Children Catch Up Club model? Oh, okay, sorry, it's already been discussed. Um, and also, uh, we have another good reflection that we really need the uh, accelerated literacy and literacy uh, remedial classes. Um, the North and West, Northwest and Southwest regions of Cameroon, and these areas in conflict situation characterized by unprecedented uh, lockdowns of the whole area. Yeah, I think gradually uh, we have a plan and also uh, we have some call for action that how we can expand this promising uh, practice um, that evolved from this pandemic and how we can scale this practice to more widely. Check other questions. So panelists, you are also uh, Welcome to jump in if there is any question that you want to respond or anyone wants to share any reflection that. Maya, you can just unmute yourself and also can share. I can also go through some of the questions that we've seen in the Slido. Um, one question, that was provided is uh, whether life skills is um, a components in catch up clubs. So that's a good question. Anyone from our panelists wants to respond to that? Uh, 
How about Lusungu? Is life skills part of catch-up clubs in your context? Hello. Uh, no, it's not part of our approach in Malawi. Thank you. I can quickly respond to that. In Bangladesh context, it is still not being tested. Uh, so we have a separate provision for the life skills sessions for the adolescents. Uh, but for this crash program, we call it sometimes uh, this catch-up club is a very much crash program that happens uh, within uh, three months, three and a half months sometimes. And with a very uh, purposive goal that uh, children will be able to uh, read with comprehension. They will be the uh, independent reader. Um, and, and actually uh, level them according to their literacy and numeracy skill. So that's what we mainly deal with these. And along with that, we also um, add uh, uh, social emotional learning activities, some mindfulness activities. And also um, we have provision for uh, the child protection, case management and non-conditional cash voucher uh, assistance uh, where, where uh, we have that opportunity. So these are the common um, components uh, that we usually uh, deliver in the catch-up clubs. Uh, but in the coming days, probably, um, if it is a highly demanding thing, then we can think about it, how we can also incorporate something related to the life skill. And when we actually introduce this catch-up club, uh, it's a very growing and emerging need from everywhere that why don't you add a few more subjects? Why only focusing on um, the mother tongue literacy and numeracy why don't you go for english or uh, science as a subject so that kind of demand we also receive uh, frequently but that's a good question and good thing as well thank you and one more um this one i think maya would be great to answer because you gave us the perspective from the global stance um what makes catch-up clubs a unique model for learner success compared to other accelerated learning programs? Thank you. I think uh, one aspect of it is the integration, especially with, with child protection, uh, given that children facing challenges in education may also have protection related challenges such as being taken away for child labor and uh, uh, perhaps violence in the home, which was a big challenge uh, during COVID as well. And I think it's, it's also related to very specific targeting for catch up following crisis, uh, during a following crisis. Um, and there are other accelerated and remedial learning programs that have somewhat different targets and approaches. And we, we have also develop guidance on how to to link which children would be most appropriate for which um for, for which programs but i think perhaps others uh, i don't know if nora might want to to mention a few things in relation to this as well yeah thank you maya i think you you, you did say uh and other colleagues as well what makes catch-up club unique Definitely the integration but i'd like to come back to what i was saying at the start we really look at uh, foundational learning from a holistic approach by integrating SEL, but also by really um, in like focusing on the play-based approach and giving a space um, outside the school, but really close to the school where children were free to uh, learn and play at the same time. And um, we get quotes uh, very often from colleagues um, in the field saying that children are learning so far but they don't even notice that they're learning because they're just enjoying themselves they're like you know um, met with their peer they have like supportive uh, adults facilitators who they look at um, as model and people they can um, share um, their anxiety about learning and and the need to catch up a lot of the remedial program are really serious and they put a lot of pressure uh, on children to succeed academically whereas the club are really the space where children uh, can uh, certainly play and learn at the same time. So that's uh, 
that's why I wanted to emphasize at the end. And thank you everyone who joined and all the um, really uh, active chat and question. Uh, we are. Um, we would like to continue actually this interaction. And so if you can share um, knowledge and if we could create a community of practice with the ECC and LinkedIn discussion group, that will be fantastic. And please, yes, reach out to us. I must say the model is not fully finalized. We're working on numeracy. We're working on inclusion of ed techs. We want to do some more research, but we certainly thinking about partnering and so um, there's some countries where you are already active and where we are present where we could collaborate and there might be other new countries so thanks everyone and uh, i will hand over now uh, to kate for the final remarks nora thanks so much and thanks so much to the entire save the children team for sharing these presentations and to everyone who is attending, I know that this is a little bit longer than the average webinar, so I really appreciate you all um, presenting and being so active in the Q&A. If you are not already a member of the Education in Crisis and Conflict Network, you can join using the QR code on the screen. You will receive updates about ECCN, including future events and opportunities to get involved. Some upcoming events across the Leading Through Learning global platform that you might be interested in um, include a conversation with the Accelerated Education Working Group of INEE and USAID Mission in Somalia on Accelerated Education in Africa, which is scheduled for September 19th a global reading network event on monitoring socioeconomic indicators in the Latin America and Caribbean region, which is scheduled for September 23rd, and a Helen networking event on employability on September 28th. And Helen is the Higher Education Learning Network, for those of you who are not already a member. And finally, we expect to release a call for participation in writing groups to support publishing practitioner-generated research later this autumn. So there is a lot going on, and we hope that you will stay connected, get connected, and join us in that. Um, and I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining us.